Hi, I'm back. Okay, so sorry about that. Give me a chance to kind of not be crying so much. So um, anyways, where I was is I found myself in a um, in an, an environment that I didn't expect myself to be because I was kind of forced into finding a job. It turned out to be a, another great experience that most people would have probably uh, not taken. I, you know, hey, I got this you know, you're a dancer, I can get you a job. It was just from a friend of mine. And, you know, why don't you just, you know, become a go-go dancer? It's great money in Vegas. And, you know, you don't have to take your clothes off. And that was a big plus for me. <laughs> and it's fast money. So I was like, ah, okay. And while I'm looking for something else, I guess I could do that just to pay my bills because I was um, living in my own apartment at that time. And so I did. And it was really fun. I met one of my um, closest friends now that's still a good friend of mine to this day. And, um, she, her, her boyfriend at the time introduced me to another opportunity, which was also go-go dancing, but it had uh, more of like a, a prestige status that we had to actually had audition for the, the position. And I guess everybody in Vegas wanted that specific position because, um, studio 54, which was huge back then. And it was like the best nightclub to work for. There could be, end up being benefits, um, working for the MGM grand and so I was like, hey, I'm going to get paid and end up getting benefits for dancing all night. Okay. You know, at 22 years old. So I took it. And um, the funniest thing is when I was uh, when auditioning, I was the shortest person there. I'm only five foot tall. And in the entertainment business, that's not good. Okay. <laughs> so even when I was in that show in Laughlin, my producer said, um, you need to grow or do something or else you're done. So I had to go buy like five inch heels and dance in them and learn how to figure that out. So, um, Mason, can you please let the do dog in so she stops barking? All right, thank you. Put her in her cage if she's going to be chewing on stuff, but I can't have her barking while I'm doing this. Sorry. Okay, so anyways, I auditioned. The, the producer of that, uh, or the manager of that casino literally told me the same thing. You're, Mason, I'm recording. Please stop yelling. Thank you. He's five <laughs> and my daughter's four. So anyways, um, where was I at? Okay, the manager, he said, you could take the job. I'll give you the job, but you better dance your butt off every day. And if I don't see you performing the way I think you should be, you're done. And so, Allie, I'm recording right now. You're hungry now. Okay, right when I'm in the middle of it. Um, Okay, you're going to need to say hi. Mm -hmm. I told her that I needed to give her breakfast before I started this. And of course, she waits till I'm doing this. So you're going to have to wait a minute because mommy said I have to do this and these people are watching. Okay? Okay, this is Allie. Just give me 10 minutes. Okay. Anyways, I'm trying to teach her she needs to listen when I tell her to do stuff and it's not apparently working. <laughs> so I told him, great. And uh, one thing that I've always been is that uh, I learned this at a recent leadership retreat, um, Becca Levi, amazing superstar director that um, is in my upline. And one thing she said, with anything you do, anything you do should be how you do everything. And that really, really connected with me because that's how I've been my whole life. And um, this is a perfect example. When I was hired to the MGM Grand to be a dancer at Studio 54, when this manager told me, you better dance your butt off every day or you're going to be done, it wasn't really scary for me because I'm the type of person that I want to be 100% and give 100% with anything I do. So I knew it was a privilege for me to have that job. And I knew other people wanted it. And they auditioned. They were probably more, um, actually more experienced than I did. They've had like dance background and I never took a class in my life. So I knew it was a privilege. So in my mind, it was like, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to do my best with every night I anyways because I know it's a privilege. So it wasn't really a challenge for me, you know? And so every night we had different sets. We had to go up and perform for like 20 minutes or 30 minutes, and then we'd had a break, and it was all night long for a couple hours. And I even had, I, I, I did that exact thing. I danced my butt off. I looked at it as it was the last time I was ever going to dance. And that who knows what's look, who's looking at me. Thousands of people around in this club just staring that I can't even see in the dark, looking down at me. And I'm there to perform and entertain them. So the way I looked at it was, 
if I'm not doing my best and I'm not performing for them, I'm I'm making them not have the experience they should have. A lot of people come from all over the world to Las Vegas, and when they see an entertainer in Las Vegas, they they want the best. They want to be entertained. And so that's the way I looked at it, is that I'm here for them and to entertain them and make their experience in Las Vegas the best it could be. I want them to look at me and say, that's why she's up there. That's why she's a dancer in Las Vegas. Because it's, it was a privilege, and it is a privilege to this day. So that's the way I've always looked at things, is that if I don't give my 100%, I'm, I'm taking away the excitement, the value of what I'm doing. So whether I'm representing to be a Sensi consultant or representing to be a dancer at Studio 54 in Las Vegas, it doesn't matter. Anything I do is how I should do everything. So I had uh, other dancers come to me and say, Jessica, you need to slow it down because you're making us look bad. And the way I looked at them was, you know what? I can't change who I am. I'm not going to stop being good at what I do and trying to be good at what I do because that's not in you or that's not where you feel you should be doing. So I'm sorry if that's what happens. And so I'm not going to stop being and um, giving 100% because of other people's shortcomings. That's just the way I look at it. You know, if you are not doing, if you are being looked at in a way that you feel is not good, maybe you should think about that and change it. The, you know, change the way you perform and have a little bit more passion. So moving on, um, I met my husband in, um, at CU54. He was a security guard and he was um, full-time active duty military and took this job on as a part-time job just for some extra money. And... Up until that point, um, I had been from relationship relationship. I've always wanted, I'm a very passionate person, always searching for love and, you know, very big fan of Disney because, uh, you know, fairy tales and dreams do come true. That's just something I've always believed in. I don't know if it's because I watched so many Disney movies as a kid or because my mom used to tell me that I was amazing and I could do anything I want to do and I believed her. I don't know. But I am a big dreamer and I'm very passionate. And so every relationship I ever had, which were all relationships, I you know definitely was the type of person I wanted to really put all my all into it and so I can see if it was the, they were the one. And I thought I had the one for a long time. But there was always something missing deep down. And something deep down always told me, don't settle. This isn't, this isn't 100%. This isn't your destiny. This person isn't right for you. No matter how great they were on the surface and how everybody else thought that they were great for me, it just wasn't right. And something in the back of my mind always said, there's somebody out there that's perfect for you. Maybe not for the next person. Maybe not for the next person after that. But for you, somebody is going to have everything you are looking for in your life to connect with you as a person. And when after I um, worked at Studio 54 for probably about six months and we were re-auditioning to be, because we had to re-audition every six months, um, a psychic came up to me and said, can I talk to you? You have this great energy coming off you. And I wasn't quite sure how I felt about it, but I was like, oh, I'm waiting for a friend. Hey, can you guys stop fighting, please? Um, so I said, okay, I'm waiting around. I'm always open-minded. I'm like, okay, let's see what she says. And I didn't give her much information. And she said, one, you're, you're basically thinking whether you should, you should sign a contract of, for something. I don't know what it is, but you don't know whether you should do it again. Well, this, this audition, I had to sign a six-month contract with. So, and I wasn't quite sure if I still wanted to do this because I was, it was really hard, the nightlife. Can you guys have that conversation somewhere else, please? Thank you. Um, I feel like I'm yelling so you guys can hear me. Anyways, if you have kids, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so... It was interesting. I was like, yeah, I am considering whether I'm signing it. And I didn't tell her that. But then I said, you know, what? I do have a question for you. I was just kind of curious what she'd say. I said, am I ever going to get married? Am I ever going to find the person I'm supposed to? And he goes, she says, you already know the person you're going to marry. And I looked at her like she had two heads, like, really? Because I didn't, I, I was just acquainted with my husband, Mitch, because he just worked with me. And so I didn't really, I mean, I knew I was, the second I saw him, I have to backtrack. The second I saw him, I said, I'm going to marry that guy. Didn't know where it came from, but that's what went through my head. And um, so I guess my intuition, which we all should really trust because we tend to know what is our destiny. Anyways, eight months went by after that. And um, after I met him and just kind of, you know, for different reasons, just avoided him. And anyways, he, uh, this psychic 
told me I already met him. Um, I met him in a party environment, which a club, a nightclub is a party environment, that's for sure. But anyways, um, and I said, oh, okay, so when am I supposed to be getting married? And she said, oh, probably within the next two years. And I'm thinking, really? I'm not even dating the person. I'm going to be getting married in two years. So I don't know if you guys believe in this, but this is my experience, okay? But my reason for telling you this is that night I went home and I said, you know what? I asked this person I'm getting married and, you know, do I, am I going to fall in love with somewhere? But I don't even, I've never really figured out what I want in a person. I know that everybody I've dated before, there was something missing, but what, what did I like in them? And what did I, what, what made me keep, stay with them for that long? And then what did, what do I need? What was missing from all these, you know, not like I've dated so many people, but like I had some relationships. And so I started writing down every little thing, every little thing, details of what I wanted in a man, you know? The way I felt when I looked at this person, the way they responded to me when I was being difficult, because I could be difficult, <laughs> you know, I'm I'm moody person sometimes. So little things like that, that they were going to be able to understand and, and help me to get past the moodiness and, you know, see the brighter side or whatever, encourage me as a, as a person and so as a, a spouse. And so literally after I wrote down exactly what I wanted from this person, Mitch and I had our first conversation. And honestly, the rest is history. We never left each other's side. And we were married two and a half years later. And he's seriously my Prince Charming. He's everything I could ever ask for. And um, I'm just as in love with him. And he still gives me chills. And we're about to celebrate our seven-year anniversary on June 18th. So this leads me to the next phase of my life. And again, I'm going to stop it here because I only have a certain amount of... <laughs> time. <laughs> so uh, until the next time, I'm going to um, start that in a second.